on today's latest edition of Dream Killers, we're going to unravel the mystery of the cloud, the cloud transformation, cloud services, moving to the cloud, cloud-based companies, cloud computing. All right, that might've been a little dramatic, but I think you get the point. <laughs> we're going to talk about the cloud today. What does it actually mean and why should you care? So back in the day, I used to have my own server in my office, a big Dell tower server. And that thing was super fucking loud. It put off a ton of heat. It was obnoxious. I always had to update it. I always had to keep uh, security updates on it and, and application updates on it. It was a ton of maintenance, but it was me. I was doing all the work and I stored uh, my files there. I had my email on it. I used it to do tests and, and uh, I used it as a virtual machine and it was all mine. It was on-prem as they call it. It was on premises. It was in my home. It was used as a server for me to store stuff and use stuff and test stuff. But basically it was just a computer. It was a really beefy computer that I used because I was an IT nerd. So back in the day, companies used to have a bunch of servers, hundreds if not thousands of servers in their own data data center on premises or on prem as they used to call it. So all those servers were located physically at the same location as your office. And you had a bunch of IT nerds updating them and putting new apps on them and, and putting security and compliance on all those servers. And it took a ton of effort and you had to pay for power and you had to pay for real estate and you had to pay for the internet to get to all these servers for people to use. And that used to be called on-prem. People still do this today. But then companies like Microsoft and Amazon and Google came up with this thing called the cloud. And basically what you're doing is you're moving all those computers in your data center to their data center and people call that the cloud. So what does a cloud actually mean? So if you've ever seen a networking diagram, you've seen there's a cloud inside that networking diagram probably when they're talking about the internet. It's a symbol in things like Visio uh, where you use the cloud to represent a cloud or a network, most likely the public internet where everybody connects to and, and you go to Google and YouTube and Netflix. That's the cloud, that's why they call it that. Let's take my example of the server I just told you about that I had in my office. The problem with having that big server in my office, once again, is it produced a lot of noise. It produced a lot of heat and I didn't like maintaining it or updating it. And then my brother-in-law came along and says this, by the way, he didn't do this. It was just an example in the video. My brother-in-law comes along and says, Hey, uh, my garage is free. I have a bunch of uh, empty space in my garage. Would you like to store your server in my garage? So in this example, I took my on-premises or on-prem server in my office and I moved it to his garage and he lives about two blocks away. Now that server is no longer on my network because I'm at home, it's on his network. So in order to get to that computer, I have to use the public internet to connect to his garage, the cloud. That's it. That's as complicated as it is. I've now moved my on-prem server to the cloud because I'm connecting to it via the internet. It's actually in his garage. And now guess what? My brother-in-law says, hey, you know what? I'll pay for the power. Uh, I'll, I'll maintain it. I'll put security uh, updates on it. I'll update all the applications for you, but you're going to pay me a monthly fee of $50 per month. To me, it seemed like a bargain. I don't have to mess with my server anymore. I don't have to hear it. I don't have to maintain it. I don't have to uh, update it. He's doing it. So I'm paying him $50 a month to update it. Now let's extrapolate this to another level. Let's say my brother's name is Google and my brother doesn't have a garage. He has a giant data center full of servers that other people have in his data center. And he maintains those and he updates those and he updates all the security fixes on it. And he maintains the internet. He maintains the network. He maintains the firewalls. Remember, his name is Google now. Now I'm paying Google $50 a month to maintain my server. That's the cloud. I'm connecting to those servers in Google's data center via the cloud, via the internet. That's really the cloud. That's as complicated as it is. I've just moved on-prem servers to another data center and I connect to it via the internet, the cloud. So when people talk about cloud transformation, you probably heard that term. All they're really saying is, hey, let's just move all the data center servers that we have in our data center and move them to Google's data center. Now you're not really physically moving the servers, you're just moving the data. Google already has servers. Microsoft already has servers. AWS already has thousands and millions of servers that they can then rent to you and you pay them a monthly fee to literally store data and update and maintain. So when people say cloud computing, 
That's all it really means is you're connecting your computer to another computer. It's just somebody else's computer in somebody else's data center. It's not your house or your company's data center. It's somebody else's data center. So when people say cloud transformation, that's really what they mean. They're literally just using the servers that they had on the on-prem at one point and moving them to the cloud. And when I'm talking about data, I mean email, for example, or files, for example. But remember earlier when I said, hey, I used to store files and email on my local server? Guess what? I don't do that anymore. I use Gmail as my personal account. You know what that means is? There's a server in Google that has my mail on it. I'm paying somebody else to store my email. Think about files, G Drive, for example, or OneDrive or Box. All that means is when I store files on cloud services, I'm just storing that file on somebody else's server. And there's lots of different kinds of cloud services. For example, there's infrastructure as a service. This is maybe providing virtualized computing services on other people's computers, like Amazon Web Services, like Google, as well as Azure, or, or Microsoft service. There's also platforms as a service where you can run applications or, or develop and run applications on other people's computers because you don't have ones that are powerful enough to do it. You just pay somebody else. There's also software as a service, right? You're paying for a software subscription on somebody else's computer. Think about things like Salesforce. All you're doing is subscribing to their service that's stored in the cloud somewhere. And you just open up a browser and boom, you can use that application. So those are just some examples of types of cloud services. And the reason people do this, because there are benefits of doing it, right, is, is cost efficiency. I just told you that server right there that I had in my house cost me $3,000. Who knows how much power it used every month? I don't have to buy those servers anymore. I can just kind of rent them from Google or Microsoft or Amazon Web Services now. Scalability. Think about me as a one-person company. What if I grew to a 10,000-person company within a matter of a year? I couldn't afford all the servers that I would have to have in order to run that company. But I can literally just buy Amazon servers or Google servers or our Microsoft Azure services because they can scale exponentially faster than me. They're multi-billion, trillion dollar companies. They have the resources. Disaster recovery is another one. What if my server failed me? What am I going to do? Nothing, because that's the only server I had. But what about a Google server or an Azure server? They have millions of servers. One fails, they just fail over to the other one, saving your data and time. Another benefit is automatic updates, right? I don't have to worry about updating my applications all the time or updating my OS all the time. I'm paying them to do that, saving me time and resources. That's what they're paid to do. But there are drawbacks, right? Now I don't control the services on my computer anymore. I'm trusting Google and Amazon and Microsoft to do all that. So there are security concerns because this doesn't happen by a robot or via AI. There are physical people going in there and going into the data center. They might have access to my data, but data and privacy is a super big problem when it comes to using the cloud because you're trusting all those companies to maintain your data like you would. That data might be sensitive and it's stored offsite somewhere. You have no control who has access to it. You're just trusting that they do. But just like there's outages with your computer at home, there could be outages at data centers, right? Those data centers could have a fire or a hurricane. There could be a problem with outages. They're not up 100% of the time. They have downtime just like your computer has downtime. So the next time you hear, we're going to the cloud, basically you're just moving your data from your computer to their computers. That's it. It's just somebody else's computer. All right. So hopefully you learned a little bit about what the cloud means. It's not this mysterious word that people are like, oh my gosh, we're going to the cloud. Nope. It's just somebody else's computer. I'm Patrick Kelly, the Tattooed Nerd. Have a great day.